first week, we looked at the situation where large computer projects are often behind schedule. It's therefore not surprising that some projects turn out to be much more expensive than the original budget, or were still cancelled. That's not to say all projects are like this, but it is a common theme as you read about computing, whether in the private or in the public sector. One of the issues we'll mention this coming week is Kent Beck's motivation for a different way. For him, that turned out to be extreme programming. He wanted a better way to build systems and a way to improve his working environment. So Brooks's paper draws our attention to the complexity found in computer systems. This is what he calls the essence of the problem in software engineering. For Brooks, trying to understand what the system is supposed to do and how it should do it is the real challenge. Things like com better compilers and developer environments are great and will help, but the significant amount of time is spent trying to understand what we need to do. If we fail to understand the problem, then we won't deliver a useful system. In the lectures, we looked at the paper from Winston Royce, which showed the familiar diagram that is often shared about what we call today the waterfall model. The waterfall model sequences a set of tasks that will hopefully lead to success. It emphasizes detailed analysis of the system requirements, which turn into functional requirements, then into design, and so on. It attempts to tackle the complexity by detailed study and design at the start. If we do that well, surely the coding phase should become straightforward. At least that is the aim. The waterfall model is an example of what we call a plan-driven methodology. Um, interestingly, the waterfall model doesn't actually show planning as a stage. However, it is implicit. As the waterfall has been interpreted by people and implemented in different ways, there is detailed planning that schedules the waterfall stages and the people and the resources needed at each stage. The Agile community doesn't follow such plan-driven approaches. If you look at the Agile Manifesto, one of the statements is about responding to change over following a plan. Indeed, if there is a detailed plan and the requirements need to change, it may mean early plans need to be adjusted, or worse still, they become worthless. However, that doesn't mean there is no planning in Agile, as we'll discuss this week. This week, we'll look at two of the Agile methodologies, Extreme Programming and Scrum. Extreme Programming, commonly called XP, has a set of practices that are designed to work together to help deliver early value, something also emphasised in the principles of the Agile Manifesto. Scrum can be seen as a higher level process, capable of using practices such as those found in XP. We will explore some of the similarities and the differences between these approaches of being agile. As you prepare for the lecture, review the Agile Manifesto. Do you think it's a useful statement about how to develop software systems? Would it be good for all types of system? See you in the lecture.